हे एवरी वन एंड वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल फिजियो ट्रेंड्स दिस इज मी फिजियो प्रेम शाह असोसिएट प्रोफेसर एट विकास कॉलेज ऑफ फिजियोथेरापी माई डियर फ्रेंड्स इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू गिव यू ऑल द इन्फॉर्मेशन रिलेटेड टू सायाटिका वॉट इज द कोर्स ऑफ सायाटिक नर्व एज वेल एज वॉट आर द सिम्टम्स ऑफ सायाटिका एंड ऑल्सो वॉट इज द ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ सायाटिका so let's begin with little bit of introduction that what is sciatica why it happens and what are symptoms can be there so basically we need to understand here that this condition result is a result of sciatic nerve or nerve root compression affected patient mostly experiences pain and paresthesia at the sciatic nerve root okay and this also can include muscle weakness or limitation of the activity it often worsens with twisting forces bending activities or cuffing activities so basically any activity which involves core can affect the symptoms of the sciatica next is what can cause sciatica so basically mainly two causes are there the first one is herniated disc or else it is limited activity or sedentary lifestyle of the patient if it is herniated disc it is because it is directly compressing the nerve root if it is because of the sedentary lifestyle it is because the core is weak and because of that the stability of the spine is not there and there will be pressure on the nerve root and that causes symptoms related to the sciatic now here it is very important that we understand what is the course of sciatic nerve so that we can understand the symptoms of the patients in a better way and we can identify and investigate this condition so for that we should know that this uh, nerve starts from the l4 to s2 nerve root and it combinedly forms this particular nerve and it starts at the lumbar plexus goes goes through the pelvis and when it exits the pelvis it is going anteriorly and inferiorly to the piriformis muscle and from that piriformis muscle now when it goes back side of the thigh it is going along with the bicep femoris muscle and after that it branches out in two nerves from the popliteal fossa which is your common peroneal nerve and tibial nerve so all this area basically whole of the lower limb is supplied by sciatic nerve mainly the back of the thigh and that is why most of the symptoms for the patient will be present in the back of the thigh like paresthesia muscle weakness the question comes how to investigate this condition it is very easy we have we can investigate it with the help of slr test in slr test also only if the symptoms are aggravated in the range between 30 to 70 that confirms that it is because of sciatic nerve compression it is not that 30 to 70 only confirms about the sciatic nerve compression but also any nerve root compression pain will be uh, elicited in this particular range If you want to know more about SLR one, SLR two, SLR three, what happens if the pain is aggravated above seventy degree range of motion or less than thirty degree range of motion? You can click on this video, which will give you more information about it. Apart from this, to investigate this condition, we can also check on the unilateral paresthesia and muscle weakness. As I was saying, uh, according to the course of the nerve, if the same uh, root, the muscles are weak, or else patient is feeling paresthesia, that again confirms that patient is having sciatica. Now the final part, my dear friends, treatment. So treatment, we can give symptomatic as well as we have to give generalized treatment and as well as treatment for the precautions. so symptomatic treatment for reducing the inflammation mainly we use is contrast bath so that uh, patient is feeling less pain less paresthesia and nerve root compression also is reduced with the help of that because of the inflammation is reduced another treatment or education to the patient can be we can ask patient to avoid prolonged activities now this means that if patient has to perform any activities in any particular position for more than 20 or 25 minutes they should strictly avoid it or else they can change the position in between and after that that they can continue performing that activities so that can be a very good advice for such patients apart from that good posture good lifting activities and everything also again because it involves your back when you are talking about posture or lifting activities if you are performing it smoothly then there are less chances we are going to compress the structure also we can give gentle lumbar stretching uh, which is for the prolonged duration so that we can maintain the flexibility we can maintain the range of motion and because of that again we can avoid nerve compression in that area and also we can advise patient for regular light exercises for the precaution purpose 
uh, which can be like light walking or swimming exercises basically this will be improving mobility of the patient and as well as core strength so that in longer duration we can prevent this condition from happening i really hope that you all have understood basic about the sciatica what it causes as well as what can be the symptoms how to investigate it and what treatment you can give for the patient from the physiotherapy point of view